Right. So we reached in the previous uh, talk uh, on this slide, right? And then we were talking about these different criteria uh, to measure how good the quality of the policy is. Um, and then we said, okay, if n equals five, compute the finite cost uh, of a policy pi. And there were these questions. So how would we go around and actually do that? So in order to do this, right? So in order to compute the finite cost criterion, which is this thing here, right? So we, we need to compute this expectation over the policy pi of the summations from zero to n of the rewards we would get. What we are going to do is first, we are going to list all the trajectories that will have positive rewards, right? So, so why why is this the case, right? So, if you if you look back at this equation, uh, you will notice that we need to take this expectation of r zero plus r one plus r two plus r n, right? So, we need to list those trajectories that actually contribute something, right, uh, to the reward. So, the those trajectories that lead to zero reward. Um, they will contribute nothing, right, in this summation. So what we're going to do first is let's take some n and then let's list all the trajectories in that n, uh, in that length n, uh, that is actually going to produce for us a positive reward signal um, or contribute anything to the reward by starting from S1. That was the setup, right? So S0 equals S1. And then following this policy, which was a deterministic policy. Okay. So following the deterministic policy, right? So if we are talking about n equals to two, right? So n equals to two, um, then let's list all the possible trajectories uh, with probabilities, with positive probabilities and positive associated sums of rewards, right? So let's list those. So if you look back at the policy, right? So the policy was, a, we are starting from S1, right? And then in S1, we are applying an action A0. So from S1, we are applying an action A0. Now, if we apply an action A0, then we actually could go to S0 with a probability 0 0.7, or we can go back to uh, you know, S1 with a probability 0.1. So one of the trajectories should be going from S1 to S0, and that will give me a plus five rewards, right? And then if I go back here and I keep doing this, like going back, then I get zero rewards. So I don't necessarily need to list that trajectory, right? But if I start from here, from S1, and then I apply this action A0, <clears throat> then I will arrive to S0 and with a probability 0 0.7, right? And then get a, a reward of plus five. Now, if I am at S0, then I need to apply an action A1, right, according to my policy, and that would get me to S2, right? And then if I am at S2, I will apply A0. From S2, I will apply A0, which will give me a probability of 0 0.4 going back to this S0 state or 0.6 probability to stay in the S2 state, okay? So, so now, so now we understand, right? This kind of uh, policy, right? That we want to apply in these different states. So now, so now for n equals to two, right? So for n equals to two, uh, uh, here I just, uh, you know, we need to compute it for n equals five. But for n equals two, just as an example, right? Uh, that means we need to sum from zero to two. That means we need to take like three steps: the zero, the one, the second step, right? So, so now if we actually are applying our policy, then we notice that we could go from S1, if we apply the action A0 according to my policy, right? So if I'm at S1, I need to apply action A0. So if I'm at S1, I will apply the action A0, and then I might go, I, I might go from S1 to S0. So I might go from S1 to S0. And then if I am at S0, the policy tells me you need to apply an action A1, and that means I will go to S2. So this is the first uh, triplet I can get, going from S1 to S0 to S2. Now, what's the probability of this to happen? Well, to go from S1 to S0 uh, by applying action A0, there's a 0.7 probability. 
And now to go from S0 to S2, there is times one probability, right? Because it's uh, deterministic, this transition, right? So there's times one, this probability. So this probability here is just 0 0.7 times one, which is 0 0.7, okay? And now what would you get for those rewards, right? So for those rewards, you would get the plus five. So the sum of the rewards you would get is plus five because everything else you're getting zero, except this arrow will give you plus five and those will give you minus one if you ever happen to be in this in this world, okay? Or in this, in this transition from S2, you know, with 0.3 probability to S0. <laughs> So, so the first set of trajectories, right, that we are going to list is, okay, the, either I'm at S1, right, and then I go to S0, then I go to S2, that's the first one, but in S1, there's a 0.1 chance I go back to S1 if I apply S0, A0, right? So if I'm at S1 and I apply A0, there's a 0.1 chance I go back to S1. So I could have a trajectory that goes as S1, apply A0, oh God, I go back to S1, and then apply A0, then I can go back to S0, right? So, so I can go back S1, so I can go to S1, right? Then go back into S1, so S1, S1, and then go to S0. In that case, the probability of going from S1 back to S1 is 0.1. So that's this transition, right? And the probability of going from uh, S1 to S0, that's this transition, uh, which is which is 0 0.7, which is this transition. And the sum of rewards you would get here because you actually made the transition from S1 to S0 is actually plus five. And now, since you have the probability, uh, so so now since you have those probabilities and those trajectories, when you want to compute the JPI, you want to multiply the probability of the trajectory multiplied by the rewards and add it to the probability of the other trajectory multiplied by the rewards. So you would get something like 3.5 plus 0 0.35, which is 3.85. So what have we done here? All we have done is we listed the trajectories that will give me a reward, right? And then, and then I actually computed uh, the probabilities, you know, um, and I actually computed the probability uh, of those trajectories by noting, oh, if I apply that action, right, I have a probability of 0.1 to go here or a probability of 0.7 to go there. And then once I computed JPI, I just need to compute, you know, this expectation, right? So, but the expectation is defined as the probability of the event multiplied by the value of the event. So let's talk about this in more details. So the event we're interested in is the sum of those rewards, right? And the probability we are interested in is the probability of the trajectory that will lead for me those rewards, right? So, so essentially, when I want to compute this expectation, right, I want to sum, right, over all those trajectories, the probability of those trajectories, right, multiplied by the reward you would get for that trajectory. So the, this reward is nothing but the sum, right, of the rewards. And this is the probability of the trajectory, which we were computing as, oh, okay, 0 0.7 uh, times, uh, um, you know, times five, because that's the probability, uh, or 0 0.1 going back multiplied by 0 0.7, it, depending on the trajectory we are interested in, okay? So, so essentially, just to be clear, right, if this is not clear, where does this expectation, where does this equation come from? Remember that the definition of the expectation of an, if a certain uh, a variable we are interested in is just the sum of the probability of the values of that variable can take times the values of the variable that takes, the, the, the values that variable takes. So in other words, in our case, we're going to be interested in those trajectories and their probabilities and the reward we will get because that's the events we are interested in. Those are the, this is the event we're interested in. So that's why for n equals two, right? We have simply listed uh, all the trajectories of length three because we start from zero, right? That we can take. So we listed. Okay, we can go from S one to S zero to S two. And that will happen with a probability of 0 0.7 because going from S1 to S0 by action A0 is 0.7 and going from S0 to S2 with action A1 is just one. So it's 0 0.7 times one, which is 0 0.7. Right? And the sum of reward here you would get was actually plus five.
Okay. Now, uh, there is another trajectory we could take, which is we said S1, we go back to S1 and then from uh, by applying A0. And from S1, we go to uh, from S1, we apply that action again, and then we go to S0. So that is going to be 0.1 times 0.7. So for this trajectory to happen as one, as one, as zero is going to be uh, 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 0.1 to go to S1 and times 0.7 to go from S1 to S0. So that's why you see here 0.1 times 0.7. And the reward you would get again is this, plus five. And now to compute J pi, we're just going to sum those, right? And multiply the probability of the trajectory by the value of the reward we got. So that's the probability 0.7 multiplied by the reward, which is plus five. And then we add to that 0.1 times 0.7 multiplied by five. And then you get a number that looks like this. Okay, now you might wonder, but wait a second, you know, if I was at S1, right, I could actually have taken S1 and then happen to go back to S1. And then from that, I happen to go back to S1 again, right? And that's true. But that contributes zero to the reward function. So there's no reward there, right? If you do this loop. So, so you could add that, but it'll be plus zero, right? So it'll be plus 0 0.1 times 0 0.1 uh, times zero, which is zero. So you just end up with this. And now you can actually repeat this computation for not two, right? But for three, right? So this is another example, one n equals to three. So we are interested in four, you know, transitions. So here we can start from S1 and, and you know, knowing how I transition, is based on this policy, right? Remember, so, so you know, I'm at S0, what action I would apply, right? And that's given by this uh, policy, okay? And now, and now if I'm at S1, right, I can go to S0 because I applied the action. So now I'm interested in computing, you know, n equals three. So I'm interested in four of those things, right? So if I can start at S1, then I can go to S0, and then from S0, right, I can go to S2. And now if I'm at S2, I can apply an action A0. So if I'm at S2, right, I'm at S2, and I apply an action A0, I can stay with 0.6 chance, you know, in S2, or I can go to uh, with 0.4 chance to S0, right? <clears throat> Okay, so so now so now the idea here, right, is that if you are you, you can list this, right? You can say S1, S0, S2, S2, or we could also have gone from S1 to S0, and then when we are at S2, uh, we go back to S0, right? Because there's a 0.4 chance of that happening if I apply an action A0, and so on, right? So all you're doing here is the same for n equals two, but for n equals three. So we're listing those trajectories, we're listing the probability those trajectories could happen that correspond to some reward, and then we're just adding those, multiply the probability by the reward, by the sum of the rewards, and then we add them. Okay, and now for n equals five, just play with that. I think you will notice that it will be, you know, between these two two bounds. So the answer would be B in this situation. Okay, so to recap, all we have done is if we want to compute, you know, this finite cost criterion, right, J pi, which is E pi of the summation of the rewards. All we need to do is we need to list the trajectories um, uh, that that will have reward contribution, right? And then after you list the trajectories, how do you list them? First of all, you have to have a policy, right? Because if I'm at S1, I need to know which action the policy tells me to apply, right? That's why it's J of pi. It's the quality of that policy pi, right? And then here, what you would do is you would just transition, right? Depending on this policy, you will compute the probability of your transitions depending on, you know, the transition model. And then you would just add the probability of those trajectories multiplied by the sum of the rewards that you would get on those trajectories. And then we've taken two examples for n equals two and for n equals three, but you could do it for n equals four and for n equals five. Okay. Now, now, okay, so if we think about it, right, like imagine we have this MDP, right, which is the same MDP here. The question to you to think about, you know, uh, uh, what is the best uh, policy? So I give you four different policies here, right? And I'm interested in the discounted cost criterion, right? So I give you the policy, which starts if we are at S0, apply A1. At S1, it will apply A1. At S2, it will apply A0. 
or I would give you, you know, the policy which is has A0 uh, at S0, A1 at S1, and A0 at S2, and so forth. And then I ask you, what's the best policy, right? So can you find the best policy out of those? Which one is the best? Okay, how would you think about this problem? Well, for each of those policies, right, that, that I just given you, right, I, you could compute J of pi, right? So for each of those policies, you can actually compute the quality, you know, of that policy. And depending on the policy that has the highest quality, right, then you would be able to um, identify the best policy. So now the policy that will have the highest quality is the policy, right, which will have, you know, high discounted criterion, because that's what we are interested in in this question, is this discounted cost criterion, right? And then, and then therefore, right, for it to be like a good policy, if we kind of intuitively think about it, I would like it to pass through this plus five very often, right? And uh, with very high probabilities, because if I can do that, then I'm getting the best rewards, plus five, plus five, plus five, plus five, right? So out of those, which one do you think is the best policy? The answer would be, uh, in this case, is a pi of S0, right? Which is uh, applying A1 to S0. And then, uh, 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 so if we are at S0, we're going to apply A1. And if we are at S2, we're going to apply a0. And then if we are at S1, uh, we're going to apply A1. So if, if, if you notice what happens here, right? So from S1, we apply A1, right? So we, we have a high chance of going back here. And now once we are at, uh, at S1, uh, we apply A1. And, and then there's a chance to go here. And then if we are at S2, we are going to apply uh, A1. And that would allow me uh, to go here and so forth. So tell me, right? So tell me, why do you think, you know, this policy C is, is the good policy for this situation? So intuitively, what is going to happen is that we're going to loop from S1 to S0 as fast as possible, right? So, so this policy here, what it is going to be doing, right? <clears throat> is going to loop, you know, over from S1 to S0 as fast as possible. So what does that mean? Imagine I start from S1, right? If I start from S1, I can apply an action A0. So an action A0, right, would allow me to go here, okay? Would allow me to go here, and I get a plus 5 reward. Or with low probability, I can go back, right? But now with high probability, high probability 0 0.7, I can go here. So that is uh, why I can go from S1 to S0, because I can apply the action A0. And now if I am at S0, I can apply this A1 action. Pi of S0 is A1, and that would take me to S2. And now if I am at S2, right, if I am at S2, then I can actually apply the action, you know, A1, because that's pi of S2. So if I'm at S2, I can actually apply A1, and then there's a chance I go back to S1, or I stay here. So I either get, you know, no rewards for this transition, or I go back here, where if I, I have the chance to go back to S0 and get a plus 5 reward. Of course, I can also potentially go to S0 and get a negative reward, right? But that's with a chance of 0.3, right? So now what is really going on is that you are trying to kind of loop from S1 to S0 as fast as possible, right, in this MDP. And therefore, you're incurring much more plus 5 rewards. And that's why this would be the best policy, okay? Right. <clears throat> So, so kind of this is like from those policies, what's the best policy? I think the way you could figure that out, what you can do, right, is you can list all those and then try to compute the JPI for them, you know, for some, you know, N or, or for big enough N. And then you can try to understand why this policy is the optimal policy. If you have questions about that, then write us in the comments below and then we'll be happy to have a look. Okay. So, so far we have talked about, you know, what is RN? We talked about MDPs. Remember, the MDPs had the state, action, successor, state, uh, state, action, transition model, uh, reward function, and then we, and the discount factor, right? And then we talked about the different ways to measure the quality of the policy, and then we took an example. Now we're going to jump and discuss value functions. So what are value functions? Okay. Now, there are two types of value functions we would be interested in. 
One is called the state value function, and the other is called the state action value function, or we call it the Q function, right? So if you heard about DQN, Q learning, and so on, right? This is a Q-based Q function, which we are also gonna discuss. But let's start talking about the state value function. So what is the state value function? The state value function is a mapping, right, from the state space S to the real numbers, okay? So it is a function of the state, right? So, so every state in the state space can have a value, right? But that value depends on your policy pi. So it's not independent of the policy pi, right? Because different pi can have different value for that specific state, right? So now the state value function is nothing but a mapping from the state space S to the set of real numbers R, right? So it can go from, for every state, it will give me a number in R, so it could be positive, it could be negative, that tells me how good that policy is in that state, okay? Now, intuitively, how do we measure how good the policy is? Well, remember, we measure how good the policy is, right? Well, by the reward, right? That's how we measure how good the policy is, right? So how good my policy is, I need to understand what reward it would get me potentially in the future. And that I would say is a good policy or a bad policy for that state S. So now the value function, how it's defined, right? So we say V is the notation. So that's V for the value function. It takes as an input a state S because it's a mapping from all states to the real numbers. And it's indexed by the policy pi. Now that's important, right? Because for different policy pi, right? We can have a different value for that specific state. Because one policy could be bad, taking me away from the goal state, for example, and another policy could be good, taking me closer to the goal state, right? So that's why we need to index the value by the policy pi, okay? Good. Now, the way it's defined, it's defined as the expectation under all the randomness we are interested in. So the randomness of the policy, if we have a stochastic policy, remember what stochastic policy means, we know that. And the transition of the environment, if we have that, and if the reward is also stochastic, we're not considering that here, but if it is, then there's this expectation will also be over that. And then what am I doing, right? So I am summing from k equals zero to infinity, like forever, right? The, this this gamma k and the rt k plus one condition that I am actually applying, right? Or I'm following the policy pi and my state st is the current state s that I'm interested in. Okay, so so okay, this sounds crazy, right? Let, 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 let's let's actually look into this in, in more details. Okay, so so let's see actually. Uh, for now, let's ignore this expectation, right? So, so for now, like just put it on the side. Keep keep just this e, e, and we're not really going to be very interested about this now. Okay, but now uh, let's look into this equation. Okay, so for k equals to zero, what do we have? We have gamma to the power zero, right? Because k equals to zero, and then I will have r of t plus k plus one, right? So r t plus k, which is zero, plus one, right? So uh, it is r t plus one, right? Plus, now for k equals to one, what do we get? We get gamma, and then you will have r, okay? And then here you will have t plus, k equals to 1, so 1 plus 1 equals to 2, plus gamma, when k equals to 2, it'll be squared, okay? r of t plus k equals to 2, then you get t plus 3, and so on, right? And then we're looping forever, okay? So, so what is happening here, right? So you are seeing, yeah, so you're, you're interested, you're starting at state as t is equal to s, yeah, and then you're following this policy pi, okay? So we're starting from st equals to s, and we're following this policy pi, 
So given we are at S and we apply pi, we go to some new state ST plus one and we incur some reward and that's RT plus one. And then from ST plus one, right, we also will apply the policy pi and then we will go to ST plus two, right, and incur some reward and that's this term and so on, that's this term and so on, that's this term and so on, right? But now notice that the quality of the next state or the next, next, next states is actually um, modified by this gamma to the power, you know, uh, K that we are looking in. So here it will be a one, you know, like this is kind of like very important transition or contribution. Uh, this has 0.9, if whatever is gamma is, you know, 0.9 times RT plus two. So it has a little bit lower contribution. This is a little bit lower contribution and so on, because we're just doing gamma power three. And of course, gamma is less than one. So gamma to the power, you know, something uh, three, four, five, it will be lower and lower and lower, right? And then, and then, uh, and then, so on, right? And and then so and and then so forth. So so, what is really happening, right? What is happening is that we are measuring, you know, the quality of that policy from that state by looking how, you know, how this policy will transition or or where this policy will transition to what successor states in the future. And what rewards I would get from those potential transitions, right? And then I would measure the uh, uh, value depending on that. So in, in other words, it's really interesting concept, right? Because it's not only taking into account the instantaneous rewards that you would get, but it's also taking into account the rewards you might get in the future of applying that policy pi in first in that state st right so if i'm apply if i'm at st and applying that policy pi i can have all those transitions right in the future and then what i what this v pi is is telling me is telling me okay for for those potential transitions that you might have you know from st apply pi to st plus one then apply pi again that's why it's indexed by pi right to st plus two indexed by pi so to st plus three now i will get these different rewards right and then what i will do uh i will actually weigh them by this gamma to the power k sum them and that's the value of my state okay so the value of my state for following a policy pi is going to tell me you know how good is this policy pi going to do downstream you know from that poly from that state s and applying that policy pi okay so so in short what the value is it's a map from states to real numbers and it's given by this equation which is actually measuring how good we are uh, in transitioning following that policy pi from st and the rewards i get and they are weighted right by this gamma power k so the more i look into the future the less effect it will have on my uh, on my uh, value of my current state okay so let's take an example of this, right? So let's imagine we have this kind of a grid maze or grid world, right? Uh, so uh, you start here at the start S and then you have two goals you can arrive to, right? So there's this goal G and then there's this goal G that you can arrive to. Now the near goal will give you a reward of plus one and the further goal will give you a reward of plus 10. Okay, so imagine I'm in this grid world, right? So I, I I start here and I can go to this goal or to that goal, right? Or or if I arrive to this state or to that state, then I will get a positive reward. But here I will get a reward of plus one and the farther one will give me a reward of plus 10. Uh, those gray boxes are obstacles, right? So if you hit them, you cannot continue to move. And now, so, you know, like here, you cannot go, you cannot go to the, to the right, okay? And, and that's the reward you will get, okay? And now imagine we have a deterministic policy for now, and that deterministic policy is, 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 is given by those arrows. So it is saying, if I am at this state, I'm gonna go right. If I am at this state, I'm gonna go up. If I am at this state, I'm gonna go left. If I am at this state, I'm gonna go right. If I am at this state, you know, I'm gonna uh, go down, then right, right, and up. Imagine that's the policy, okay? So now, what is the value function of this policy pi, right? 
uh, uh, when when we have gamma equals to 0 0.9. Okay, so this is intuition, right, rather than exact computation, right? But the idea is that I give you A, B, C, and D. These are the different options where the more blue, you know, the, the more, the bluer the color, right, that, that means the higher the value that you will have in that state, right? And the, uh, the less blue towards white, then the less the value in that state. Okay, so let's think about that intuitively. Well, the highest reward, right, I would be getting is plus 10, okay? So therefore, you know, this state here will have like a very blue thinking, right? Because that's the kind of the highest reward. But also this state here, because the policy is saying go up, right? Which means get me to the to the reward. It's getting also a plus 10, uh, sorry, it's getting also a, a high blue value because it's telling me go to the plus 10 state. Okay. Now, now, okay, this is the same for everyone, right? So it's like for everyone, you have these two things are blue, 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 very blue, meaning that, oh, okay, good, 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 right? Okay. But now let's look into this state. Now, this state is actually telling me, you know, go to the right. But I know that if I go to the right in two steps, I will arrive to the goal, right? So if I go to the right, then I, I am in this state. I go up, then I arrive here. Whoops, sorry. Then I would arrive here to this state, right? So this state, yeah, if I look at this equation, yeah, it will have a reward of zero, you know, for the first gamma, for the first K, but then it will have a reward of plus 10, right, for the second K, which means that it also should be blue, right? Because because uh, not as blue as those, but kind of blue because it has a positive reward or a positive value that uh, that can go by following this policy from here. So therefore, if you look at this uh, at, at this or this or this, you notice that this is not right because this this state here should have a high value if gamma is equal to zero point nine because that means I look further into the future uh, and then I will get to this uh, positive reward. So that's why the answer is going to be actually this guy here because it, because you will see that here okay i can get the high value and then this one also you know will have a high value lower than this lower than this but still a high value because in a couple of steps i will arrive to the goal similarly here similarly here and so forth okay so so that's kind of the intuition, right? So that's the intuition why this would look something like this, right? So that's kind of the intuition why the value function, right, will be colored like this, where you have a high blue or very blue, uh, blue, uh, a little bit less blue, less blue, less blue, and so on, okay? Now, now to, to better to, of course, this is just intuition, but we can also compute those things, okay? So now imagine, imagine I'm interested in computing the value Right. Imagine I'm interested of computing the value of this state, which is in the first row, third column. Right. So it's in the first row, third column. So I really just need to compute this equation. Right. OK. So from this equation, I know that, OK, I can have R1 plus gamma R2 plus gamma squared R3 plus gamma cubed R4 plus gamma 4 R5 plus gamma 5 R6. OK. So I will have the reward. Right plus gamma, okay, of the R2, uh, that, you know, the next state, plus gamma squared R3, okay, plus gamma 5 R6, okay? Yeah, so, so, that's kind of what, what I, I just did here, right? I just applied this equation here. Okay, so I said I can go to R1, then gamma R2, then gamma squared R3, then gamma cubed R4, then gamma 4 R5 plus gamma 5 R6. Now, please notice that you will get zero rewards everywhere except on the last one. You would get a reward of 10. So that's why all those rewards, right? So the R1, the R2, the R3, the R4, and the R5, right? So this R, this R, this R, this R, this R, they're all zeros, only the last R, which is 10, and that would be R6, right? So, so right, so you have a reward for this state, right? Then you have a reward here, then you have a reward here, then you have a reward here, right? So maybe it wasn't clear, but the idea is that you'd get R1, R2, R3, R4, R5, R6, okay? 
And now notice that you'd get zero, 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 zero. There are no rewards anywhere, right? Because we're computing this equation. Only gamma to the power of five R6 will have a good reward. And that would be uh, a 10. So now, so now gamma to the power of five times 10 is about 5.9 because we picked gamma to be 0 0.9, right? Uh, and then, and then, and then that's that's kind of why you get the value that this is here. Now you can do the same for that state, for that state, for that state, for that state, and so on, right? So now you would notice that the the closer you know I am getting to this ten goal in my states, the the contribution of this gamma to the power something will actually reduce, right? Uh, because here, if I am at here, you know, you'll get an R0 plus gamma R1 plus gamma squared times 10, right? And the R1, R0 and R1 will be zero and gamma squared times 10 would be the value that you would uh, get. And therefore, now uh, you will have gamma squared times 10, so it will have a higher value than this state. And so on for the other states, okay? So, so I hope this is clear, right? But what is this value measuring? This value is measuring for us how well we are going to do downstream by applying a policy uh, pi and, uh, from that state s uh, from that state s t. And then we took an example, first an intuition, right, where we followed that policy and we said, ah, okay, here I have a high reward, and that's why I have to be like very high value. And this one takes me to that high reward with one step. So, oh, I will also have very high value. Similarly, this in two steps will get me to the high reward. So I will have a blue value, uh, but that's less than this one, but still high, and so on, right? And uh, of course, by following this policy pi. Okay, and then we took an example on how you would compute this. So we said, okay, if we're interested in the value of this state, right, that is here, like the first row, third column, we just need to compute this equation following our policy pi that we see here. Okay, and then what we've done is we just said, okay, you get the reward plus gamma times the reward plus gamma squared times R3 plus gamma squared times R4 plus gamma cubed. Uh, uh, sorry, gamma cubed times R4, gamma 4, R5, and gamma 5, R6. That's this. Now we said here we get 0, 0, 0, no rewards. Only the last one we will give us a reward, right? And that's why we got like some value, which is 5.9, assuming a gamma of 0 0.9, okay? And then you can compute this for you know all the other states. Okay, uh, hopefully this is clear. Um, but now, but now this, as you see, uh, we are measuring the value of this state, right, with respect to this policy, by taking into account where I would go next. You know, where I would go next. And of course, here we assumed very simplistic things like deterministic transitions and deterministic policy. But if they were not deterministic, all you would need to do is to compute this expectation. So how would you do that? You would, again, you know, write down all these possible trajectories with their probabilities, and then you will just follow our example, which we did. Okay? Now, now, okay, now this is a, a um, kind of a, something to think about, but notice that if we have a policy pi that is given by this, right? So figure out the value function uh, of this policy, okay? Uh, uh, following this policy, which one of those it would be do you actually think? No? So the answer of this, uh, it will be A, Okay, and the reason why that's the case is that because when the agent is here, the agent will be stuck in a loop zero reward. Because if the agent is here, then it will take this action, so it'll go there, it'll get zero reward, it'll go here, it'll get zero reward, it'll go here, get zero reward, and then, oh, this takes me back there, then I get zero reward, then this takes me back here, I get zero reward, and so on. But do think about this, right? So I just gave you the answer and why, but do think about it if this makes sense. If it does not make sense, also write us in the comments below, we will be happy to have a look. But the idea is that, as you see, this thingy here, it's taking me here, and then I'm stuck here looping, oh my god, I'm getting zero rewards. Okay. Now, apart from the reward function, there is um, uh, something else we are interested in, uh, sorry, apart from the value function, there is something else we are interested in in reinforcement learning, which is called the state action value function, or what you know as cube function. 
So now the Q function, okay, is a mapping not from S to R, but it's actually a mapping from S cross A to R. So it needs to take two things. So it's not only gonna say uh, for a state, what is the value, but it will say for the state, applying that action, what is the value? So state action pair will have a value, okay? And that would be, that's why it's mapped from S cross A to R, okay? So we call this the Q function, and again, it's indexed by pi. Now, you notice that the equation of the Q function and the equation of the value function, they are actually very similar to each other. But the main difference, right, is that we are conditioning as well on the action AT. So the Q function is actually measuring, you know, the value of following the policy pi from a state as T equals S after applying an action AT equals A. So you start, you have ST and you have A, and then you follow the policy there off, and then you ask what's the Q value. And now, um, uh, so 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 before before uh, understanding uh, the exact things about the Q value, I want to give you an exercise for the next time to think about. Now you know this kind of pictorial depiction, you know, we have made. Uh, but now notice that we are splitting every cell into four quadrants. Why we are splitting every cell into four quadrants? Because we want to reason about Q of state and action, right? So we're assuming that there are four actions per every cell, go left, go right, go up, go down, okay? And now I tell you, okay, this is your maze, again, starting from state S and going to this goal gets you plus one, or going to the far goal, you know, will get you uh, plus 10. The reward function is this, what we just said, and the policy is what we just talked about before, deterministic policy. Here we go right, go up, go left, or, you know, or go uh, uh, right, go down, go right, 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 and then up. And now, <clears throat> why is this a Q function kind of depiction making any sense, right? So notice what we've done is that we just split, you know, every cell into four quadrants. And now you notice that each quadrant has a different color, right? Uh, uh, like like the, it seems that the Q value for, you know, taking the action up, you know, in this cell um, has a high value, has a high Q value, uh, lower here, lower here, and so on. So why that's the case, you can think about it for the, for the next time. So with this, I would like to uh, stop uh, this lecture, and then the next time we are going to be discussing further the value function and the Q function and talk a bit about the Bellman equations before jumping into dynamic programming. But now, by now, we know what an MDP is. We know how to reason about an MDP, right? This is the first lecture. We took an example on how you would compute the criterion of how good your policy is. Then we discussed what value functions are in this lecture and a bit about what the Q functions are. So I will see you next time where we dig deeper into those details. And if you find this very useful, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you, and I will see you next time.